It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Of course I can win this, without a doubt. I'm hoping it's going to change my life. This is one tough competition. To win Master Chef would be absolutely fabulous. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. In this one-hour episode, these six contestants will all compete for the last remaining quarter-final place. The winner will then be up against three other exceptional heat winners. Our quarter-finalist is Mitra. Elisa. Denise. <laughs> but first, it's the quick elimination test. We need passion, we need skill, we need drive, we need determination, but really it's about that want, isn't it? The burning desire to change their lives. The most talented cooks make the difficult look easy. I want to see someone who's comfortable in their surroundings, comfortable with equipment and comfortable with the produce. Welcome to MasterChef. Your first test today has to be about you holding your nerve. Prove to us that you do really cook. One decent plate of food in 50 minutes. At the end of it, three of you will be leaving us. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's go. The contestants have to invent a dish and cook it from any of today's ingredients, which include raspberries, dried apricots, saffron, couscous, lamb leg steaks, cherry tomatoes, harissa, mint, aubergine, and new potatoes. Thirty-three-year-old decorator Michael likes experimenting with lots of different ingredients. What are you making for us? I'm making a pasta dish. I'm going to flavour the pasta with parsley, uh, butter and a saffron cream sauce. Some aubergine, cherry tomatoes in the oven with garlic, pepper and salt. You know, I've marinated the lamb as well and I'm going to put that on the side. How can you make that become one plate of food? We'll wait and see. I know that I can cook, I know that I'm very experimental and I'm, I'm creative with my food. With the right sort of guidance, I think I could be exceptional. Mother of four, Louise, thinks it's time to follow her true passion. I really want to um, have a, a second career doing something that I really love doing. Cooking seems to be the thing that I'm good at. Go for it. Why are you on MasterChef, Louise? To cook for a living and have my own restaurant and uh, cook some really nice food for people. Ladies and gentlemen, you have had 20 minutes already. 20 minutes gone. 46-year-old Caroline wants to share her lifelong commitment for good home cooking. I'd like to do my own cookery classes and pass on my skills and my passion to other people. If I don't do something now, before long, it's going to be too late. Um, and I'm going to go for it. I really am. Glenn, you've decided to clear all your ingredients away. Yep. And you've only got what you're going to work with. Yeah. And there doesn't look like there's going to be very much here. Uh, I think there's enough, enough to get me by. OK. Let's hope my food does the talking. Carpenter Glenn doesn't believe in overcomplicating his food. Straight, simple cooking and making sure the basics taste really good, and I think that's what might shine through. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just ten minutes left. 43-year-old Mark wants to leave the jewellery business for a career in food. I want to change my life. Um, I want to turn my back on, on what I've been doing for 22 years. You're here because you love to cook. What's your dream? I want to open a, uh, a small bistro, a small restaurant, and follow my dream. So you got the drive? Yeah. Do you have the skill? I've got the basic skills. Obviously, I want to, to hone my skills, and that's why I'm here. Emily, unless I'm mistaken, it looks like you're making a pudding. Well, I'm attempting to make a raspberry tart with a creme patisserie and a short crust pastry. Very, very nice indeed. Is yeah. pastry your thing? Is this what you love to do? Yes. 
I think so. It's what I've done so far. I'm slightly nervous to say that in case it goes wrong. 19-year-old Emily believes her love of baking may give her a competitive edge. I think I will win it. I think that I have the love and the passion and hopefully the knowledge. You've got four, four minutes left. That's it, time's up. Experimental cook Michael has pulled out all the stops and made pasta from scratch with a saffron sauce, roasted tomatoes, aubergines and garlic, and marinated lamb. The flavor of your saffron cream sauce is really, really good. I like it that you've done different processes, but I'm scared that you've put all of this together. Mother of four Louise is hoping lamb with minted couscous and a pecan sauce will get her through to the next round. There's not really a lot going on. The sauce is a little bit weird because it's creamy in texture. I thought the sauce was quite tasty. <laughs> the couscous has no flavour at all. And the reason is simple. You boiled that couscous. Mark's hopes of a change of career rest on his spicy lamb served with apricot couscous and aubergine and tomato. Your lamb's cooked quite nicely. It's, uh, it's nice and moist. Um, there's a little bit of spice picking up in there. I like the sweetness of the apricot. You've got mint running through there as well. Yeah. It's sort of a mixture of things on a plate that need to be able to held together by something wet, juicy, saucy. Carpenter Glenn has cooked a lamb steak on roast potatoes with an aubergine puree. Textures are great. Everything is cooked very, very well. Thank you. Everything is very soft. The lamb is still very, very soft. Your lamb is extremely tender. The puree itself has got a little bit of flavour. It just lacks oomph. Wannabe cookery teacher Caroline is hoping to impress with her lamb steak, fried potatoes and tomato sauce. Fried potatoes, lamb steak, tomato sauce. Master chef. I know. It's a nice thing to eat. That's not my problem. My problem in judging you is how can I tell from that? that you may be a great cook. Pastry cook Emily is banking on a raspberry and custard tart. Your pastry's lovely. Short, buttery, well cooked, and the filling, your intention was that the custard should be set? Yes. Probably out of all the dishes in, in the room, I was most excited about this one. So I don't know who's now more disappointed, you or me. I think I might be. <laughs> you guys can now go and get a cup of tea. John and I are going to decide which three of you are going home, which three of you are staying. Thank you, off you go. Glenn's food, his lamb was pink and it was soft. The potatoes underneath, the onions, the aubergine on the outside, it was good. It was probably the closest thing in here to professional plate of food. So let's have Glenn in. I'd like to start talking about Louise. I thought her food was really very, very average. We had couscous with no flavour in it whatsoever. Quite a weird textured sauce. Louise is going home. 
All right, look, if there's someone I really think should stay in... Yeah. Michael. The guy made pasta, made a very, very good creamy sauce, and uh, cooked his lamb pretty well. The guy can cook. Stefan's sauce was lovely. I mean, it didn't work because there was so much of it on a plate. Michael's in. Yeah. Caroline's food was too simple. Some new potatoes, boiled up fries, some tomato sauce and a lump of lamb. I've got children who would be able to do that. Caroline goes. Now it's between Emily and Mark. See, I don't think there's any room for Emily. We had a pot of runny custard that didn't even taste like custard. It was like a pot of cream. Sweet crust pastry, tries to make custard, doesn't quite work, understands where the fault is, presents a plate of food, it didn't look too bad. Uh, you know? Hopefully they can see I do have skill and it just went a bit wrong today and hopefully give me a chance to do better next time. Well, I quite like Mark. Harissa on the lamb was nice and the mint running through the couscous was good. It was all right, it wasn't that exciting. I'd like to think I've done enough, um, but there were some other good contestants in there and you just, you never know how the judging's gonna go. Yeah, two very different cooks. Both Emily and Mark did have mistakes on their plate. It's a difficult decision. Three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Glenn. You're cooking tomorrow. Congratulations. Louise, Caroline, sorry ladies, you're leaving us. Michael, you're staying with us. So, Mark or Emily, who stays, who goes? Congratulations Emily, you're staying. Sorry Mark, you're leaving us. I think what I can learn and achieve from this will be an absolute life-changing experience. I'm feeling ecstatic. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. I'm pleased that they saw something in me and I now have a chance to prove that there's a lot more that I can do. We have our three. And now we're going to send them to Professional Kitchen and see how they cope. We're going to find out whether they really can cut it tomorrow. And when they come back from this kitchen, we'll know whether they can really stand the heat of a professional service. It's day two, and the contestants arrive at Waterloo Brasserie, a restaurant serving classic French-inspired food. Our three amateur cooks will be working under the watchful eye of head chef Frank Lebeillet. Good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to uh, Waterloo Brasserie. Let's crack on, yeah? Come on, guys. It's 12 o'clock, and as the restaurant fills up, the first orders come in. Hello, chef, ça marche. Two salmon tartare, three asparagus to follow. Two rump of lamb, medium, please. Yes, yes chef. Yes, chef. Sure. Thank you. Michael is in charge of lamb rump with salsify and parsnip crisps, but is a little too keen to get started. What are you doing? I haven't asked you away, yeah? So take off your salsify, keep your juice on the side, yeah? You need to really, really listen to me, yeah? Because in 15 minutes, we've got 50 covers coming. Yeah. yeah? And I want to have time to repeat and repeat okay. again. OK. Yeah? The order was up there, and I got a bit over eager. I just misunderstood him at the start. He has to now ask for it. 19-year-old Emily is making a hot and cold salmon starter with a cumin and apple sauce. Less lemon love. Yeah, just a dash, yeah? For the first one, it's not too bad. On the pass, send it over. Service! It's coming up now, it's coming, it's coming, so get ready, right? Ça marche, chefs, uh, three asparagus salad. Carpenter Glenn has been given an asparagus starter served with a poached egg and hollandaise sauce. And with five orders already, he's in at the deep end. Quick, Glenn, quick, Glenn, yeah? Warm sauce, let's go. More than five minutes that the, the order has been placed, guys, yeah? Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> table 29 away, guys, I need two lamb. Men away on table 14, I need... Four rump of flam, please. Double round, double round, 
Mr. Mike, I was talking to you. Yeah? Yes, Chef. Thank you. Lunch service is now in full swing, and Michael is still having problems. Ali, start again. I'm a bit too overexcited, maybe, and uh, making stupid little mistakes. Guys, I need the uh, four asparagus and the uh, four salmon tartar, please. Now is the time to kind of hold your nerve and keep it all together. <laughs> After dropping her ingredients on the floor, Emily is falling behind and the orders are piling up. How long for the salmon, guys? Is on the pass? Um, 30 seconds, chef. Ah, come on. And she's not the only one feeling the pressure. It's absolutely chaotic now. I've got five to do. I've got to get this done. But I don't want him shouting at me. Thank you, Glenn. This one's a good one. It's a good play, mate. With service nearly over, Michael begins to get things right. Perfect. I like it. I like that one. Service. Well done, Mike. Thank you. So how does head chef Frank think our three amateurs coped? Mike, I would say, is too excited. He was better at the end of the service, uh, but the first plate was a bit, uh, a bit messy. I think it's got to be just nerves, really. I had four steps to do. Every now and then, I just made a simple cock-up of some of the dishes. Emily, she was too scared, too scared. She needs more, more and more and more. I think Chef thinks that I'm a bit too quiet, maybe, and I need to stand up for myself more and shout a bit. Glenn, it looks quite easy for him, I think. For the three, I would say, I would take Glenn. You can feel there's something, the same thing. There's a potential behind that. There's a potential, definitely, definitely. Apparently, they just asked me if I want to work here, so, hey, who knows? Welcome back. You, right now, have a chance to prove to us how good a cook you are. This is your food, no excuses. One hour, good luck. Let's go. They have to cook a two-course menu they've chosen themselves. Carpenter Glenn triumphed in the pro kitchen, but will his back-to-basics style get him through to the quarter-final? What are your dishes? I've got uh, an asparagus soup with truffle cream, and I've got a fillet of beef, sauteed potatoes. I'm not one for fabulous, vast flavours. I reckon I can do this. Piece of cake. Glenn's dishes are classic, but a little simple. It's fine to play safe, but it has to be absolutely perfect. 20 minutes gone. We have 40 minutes left. Yesterday, Michael used too many ingredients. Will he pare them down today with his Mediterranean-inspired menu? What are your two dishes, Michael? The stuffed peppers, stuffed with anchovies, capers, or garlic, and a Mediterranean seafood stew. Although my maths is not great, I'm up to about 29 different ingredients on your bench. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into this dish. And after our conversation yesterday and your time in the kitchen today, no difference in the style of cookery? I completely agree with what you said yesterday, but this dish, I, I've cooked it before, hundreds of times, and um, it's delicious. Big fish stew, I mean, that's great. Really, really good, but there is lots going on there. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 minutes. 20 minutes left. Emily just scraped through the first round with her runny custard tart. Today, she's baking another risky pudding in her two-course menu. Emily, all going well? Yeah, I'm quite happy at the moment. Main course, I'm going to do a lamb with a kind of three-bean stew, and then I'm going to do a chocolate beetroot cake with candied beetroot and mascarpone. And what does this beetroot bring to a chocolate cake? It kind of cuts the richness of the cake. <laughs> Emily's food, if it's done very well, it's a good chocolate cake, it's a very, very good lamb steak, and it's a good starting point. It's just
Just two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, step away from your benches. Your time is up. Experimental cook Michael has made stuffed peppers with capers, tomatoes and feta, followed by a seafood stew of mussels, prawns, monkfish, saffron and chilli. It is really, really powerful. There's a lot of flavours in there. Well, actually, too many flavours in there. I want to see you really calm this down, because I'm convinced you can cook. Shall we move on to our bowl of fish stew? I actually really like the look of this stew. Gutsy, it's big, it's got shells in it. It's not about the faint-hearted. There are so many different ingredients now in this bowl of fish stew. You've got to deliver defined flavours by using a few ingredients rather than a muddy flavour by lots of ingredients. I can do that. I know I can do that. The fish is soft, it's good, very, very well cooked. It's really, really good. You are very, very good for what you're doing out of your own home kitchen. No doubt about it. Thanks. There were some negative points in, in those comments. Um, there was also positive points, hopefully, that they can, they can see through, that I've got skills in the kitchen and that I can cook. Carpenter Glenn's starting with an asparagus soup with truffle cream, followed by a fillet of beef with a parmesan and mushroom topping, and sautéed potatoes. You can't argue with it. It's a very well-made bowl of soup. Thank you very much. But it remains a bowl of soup. <laughs> OK. You had nowhere to hide with that soup, and you've got no mistakes at all. I mean, it's simply very, very good. Thank you very much. That's your first course, your soup done. We've now got your steak. I like it because it's a very well-cooked piece of beef. To be truly great, it needs a nice sticky sauce. OK. It works together, doesn't it? Glenn, you're not doing bad at all, mate. Thank you very much. It's good basic cookery. Is that enough to make you a quarter finalist? I think before you experiment and start showing um, intuition and, and making gambles, you need to be able to understand the basics like any trade. I think I've done well. Pastry cook Emily has cooked a lamb and three bean stew, followed by a chocolate and beetroot pudding with mascarpone. The surprise that goes into your mouth is that fresh of the lemon juice, the wonderful heaviness of the mint that's on top of the lamb. It's just a shame the lamb's not cooked right. Yeah. Lamb, mint, and the bean stew, for me, it's like I'm eating two different dishes at once. Okay. Should we move on from beans to cake? It is a very, very, very good, moist, delicious chocolate cake. The sweetened or syruped beetroot has become like just syrupy, sweet, red juice. Yes. You do get a slight earthiness of mm -hmm. beetroot. It's very nice. I think it's more afternoon tea than it is MasterChef dessert. Not everything went right, I know that. The lamb wasn't properly cooked, but I'm happy in general. I think my food represented me quite well. You know what comes next. You have a long wait. We have a big chat. Thank you. Off you go. Master Chef. We've got three cooks, we've got one quarter-final place. It's good cooking in here. You could do a lot with these cooks. Emily's chocolate and beetroot cake today was the star. It was a very, very good chocolate cake. 
but actually for her to make it through to the next round, she had to do two perfect dishes. Lamb wasn't cooked properly, the dish wasn't coherent, and that's a shame. It was unattractive, it was confused. I think her inexperience is showing. Her MasterChef journey, in my mind, has come to an end. I think that means Emily's out, and we have a fight between Michael and Glenn. Glenn's food, asparagus soup, truffle cream, good soup, velvety, full of flavour. It was a decent bowl of soup, but so it should be. A soup is not difficult. Today, for me, he got the idea that the foundation of great food is the basics. I thought it was a very nicely cooked piece of beef. Beyond that, I can't see very much. I want this so much, yeah. I am, I'm, you know, I'm prepared to go to any lengths to get this. Let's talk about Michael's food, because his two dishes were very, very complex. The peppers with the tomatoes, the anchovies, capers, rocket. You say it, and it's just not right, because he's trying too hard. It's the quality of the cookery in the fish stew that I like. The attempt to make something really big and wholesome and packed full of flavour, saffron, tomatoes. But there is no way in the world you're going to get a beautiful, definitive flavour out of a pot of fish stew with 26 different ingredients in it. Really got quite attached to the idea of uh, seeing this, this through. Uh, as far as I can, I can go, I, I want to win the competition. We have two cooks who could possibly make it as great cooks, but they're coming from completely different ends of the spectrum. Who is going to get to the winning post first? We don't agree. I look in your eyes and I know we don't agree. I know we're back in different horses here. We have made a decision. A decision that was fiercely debated. Our quarter-finalist. It's Glenn. Congratulations. Yes! Come on. I'm obviously feeling disappointed, um, but I think to a certain extent I knew that it was coming, I'd made too many mistakes to be able to get through to the next round when other people were cooking technically better than I was. Gutted, absolutely gutted. Obviously, if, if I'm to progress with my cooking, I need to not complicate the dish so much. Well, for speeches, really, I ain't, you know, for once in my life, I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> You can expect big things from me, as big as me. So I hope I can deliver everything and it's good. And maybe a big man like myself can give it a delicate touch. Gravy. <laughs> Glenn's place is secure for now. But in the morning, he'll be back for the next daunting stage. It's early morning on quarter-final day, and these four heat winners have returned to battle for a coveted place in the semi-finals. Trying to find the best from these four is no easy task. This is serious, serious pressure. Who's given up to make it in a professional world? Who really wants it? Who's going to make it through? I can win this. I'm going to grab it and do the best I can. This is it. It's crunch time. I would love to go all the way. Of course I want to win it. I'm quite competitive now. The emotion won't take over because I need to stay focused. I want to win this. Yes, I'm nervous and yes, I'm emotional, but I'm committed to this and I want to go all the way. We've seen lots of cooks so far. We've found the best four. And now we're here to find ourselves one semi-finalist. 25-year-old office worker Mitra impressed in the heat with her exceptional understanding of cooking processes. Raw bean and pea, really yummy, and that gnocchi is beautifully made. Each component part is done very, very well. Mitra is in this quarter-final because of her technical brilliance. We spotted the fact the girl does seriously cook. 
Kanchi today bring great food together to make it really explode. So I've kind of surprised myself by getting this far. I do have high hopes and I guess now I want it more than ever. Lebanese-born Elisa showed an amazing ability to balance Mediterranean flavours with her red mullet, langoustine and potato main course. I think that's beautiful. Very clever to involve lots of other green ingredients and still let the fish be the star of the show. Elisa understands the cooking of the Mediterranean perfectly. She packs sunshine and flavours into her dish better than anybody else I've come across in a long, long time. I am really, really excited about what Elise could pull out of the bag today. To win MasterChef will mean absolutely everything to me. It's a dream come true. I've dreamt of such an opportunity for such a long time. I'll be living my passion. I'll be living my dream, really, if I win this. His heat carpenter Glenn impressed with two perfectly cooked simple classics asparagus and truffle soup. You had nowhere to hide with that soup, and you've got no mistakes at all. And it's simply very, very good. Thank you very much. And steak and chips with wild mushrooms. It's good basic cookery. Is that enough? The guy has a natural ability, the guy understands great food. He has a good understanding of the foundations and the building blocks of modern cookery. But he needs more than that. I just believe I'm a very good cook. Just simple cooking. None of this fusion stuff or messing around with ingredients. Just making sure the basics taste really good. Just well, thank you. I think that's what might shine through. During her heat, Mama Four Denise wowed with her combinations in a warm beetroot potato and pigeon salad. I love the sweetness of that beetroot with the pigeon. I would happily demolish the whole lot and profess myself happy. Denise cooks effortlessly. So many different processes. That lady is packed full of natural ability, understanding and cookery know-how. But can she pack her food with flavour. Can she give it that winning edge? I think that this is a chance to change my life. I just want to take every opportunity to just go for this and let it take me wherever it's going to take me. This quarterfinal is so exciting because we have got four great cooks. For one of these guys, it is going to be the start of an extraordinary journey. It's 10 o'clock, and the contestants are back at MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home. This is the ingredients recognition test. The building blocks of great food come from basic ingredients. Today, I've got breads, one of the oldest manufactured food products of the whole world. What I've got is the humble or not so humble egg. As a cook, you must know how to identify good ingredients. This is why we do the ingredients test, to find out just how much they know about food. This is a duck egg. It's shell is white, it's a very strong flavor and a very creamy texture. This is ingredients recognition. Mm -hmm. What I've got is eggs. Eggs is eggs. Eggs is eggs. Mm. And it most certainly is in this case. Can you tell me what those eggs are? That looks like a duck's egg. That one? Duck egg. Duck egg. What's that? It's a goose egg. Mitra is off to a bad start in the ingredients recognition test. Now she needs to convince John and Greg she has enough drive and ambition to go further in the competition. I do have high hopes and I would love to get through, but at the end of the day, it's competition. Someone's got to go. I just hope it's not me. Now I've got this far and I kind of have a bit of a boost of confidence. It's totally changed my outlook. It's also made me assess what I do now and made me realise that actually I can do something I'm passionate about. I don't need to sit in an office if I don't want to, but I just have to get out of there and do it and work hard. Thank you very much. Thank you.
This is chia batter. And it's uneven with huge air bubbles through it, but wonderfully moist. Do you know what this is? Chia batter. Okay. Chia batter. This one is chia batter. Looks like a rustique or something like that. Denise has failed to identify the ciabatta. Now she needs to keep her emotions in check and articulate how determined she is to succeed. I do feel quite nervous about the whole thing and that is down to a basic kind of desire to want to win. I want this more than I could even put into words. This opportunity would mean the, the world to me and I would not get the chance in any other way. It just it wouldn't happen. I'm 100% committed and dedicated to this. I want to learn as much as I can. I just want to give it absolutely everything I've got. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. This is an ostrich egg. Now look at this beauty. It's enormous. It's the equivalent to 24 hen's eggs. If you want it soft boiled, it'll take you 50 minutes. What's that one? I reckon that's an ostrich egg. <laughs> That's a big egg. I think it's an ostrich egg. This. Ostrich? I would have said an ostrich egg. All right, or well, a dinosaur egg. <laughs> Glenn has done well in the ingredients test. He now needs to persuade John and Greg he has the passion of a potential MasterChef champion. Now it really has sunk in how far I may be able to get on this. Because I'm probably the best one here. I'm not an emotional man. OK, but since I've come back this time, it really has sunk into me how important it is. And I actually do believe I actually can win this. If I did win it, I think I'd be good on TV as a celebrity chef. So that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is pizza bread, probably one of the most ancient breads it's used mainly for Mediterranean foods. This is definitely a bread that Elisa should know. What's this one? That's pita bread. Pita bread? What's this? That's pita bread. What's this? Pita. I should know. <laughs> Elisa has recognised nearly all the ingredients. She now needs to prove her culinary knowledge is matched by her passion. I think I'm just going to have to speak what's in my heart, really. All my life I've been preparing for this. I hope it shines through. I've always looked for ways of fusing the Lebanese flavours with those of the traditional taste of the West. Um, experimenting with this fusion makes me more passionate about cooking. Um, on a more personal level, MasterChef has been the biggest blessing in my life, apart from my son. And it's a blessing that I'm not willing to let go very easily. I'm determined, passionate, and will do whatever it takes to win this. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is always tough, this bit, because we have four great cooks. Only three of them can cook for us. So, who stays, who goes? We had the ingredient recognition test, and they were all very, very close, although Elisa did do very, very well indeed. And I didn't realise until now the passion the woman has. Yeah, Elisa's got that hunger. She knows how to cook. I think we should let her go through. So, Elisa cooks, that's one in. Denise did struggle in the recognition test, but the passion, the love, the emotion, it's impossible to ignore. It's infectious. I think she's a good cook. Her food has been the most elegant so far through the competition. She is driven, that's important. So, Denise goes through. Mitra really told the truth, really told it from the heart. She said, look, I don't have to be in that office. That thing that I've loved all my life, I actually am good enough to earn a living out of. Now, Glenn did a lot, lot better in the ingredients test than Mitra. But he sat here and said that he thinks he'd make a good celebrity chef. Well, what does the guy want to do? I mean, that's, that's, that's a worry for me. He has a dream. Absolutely. He's trying to protect himself. He says, I'm not an emotional guy. He's emotional. We saw him when he won his heat. Woof, woof, he said. He wants to do this. I think there's lots to be seen from Glenn. John, I'm not sure at all. This is 
very hard indeed because you've come so far. But the rules are that only three of you will cook for us today. Mitra, you're leaving us, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed. I think it's the worst point that anyone could get kicked out at. I'm sure whoever goes through today will do fantastically. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. <laughs> the great thing for us is right now, we know that in front of us, we have a semi finalist. Let's go and cook. The three remaining contestants have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. Elisa is drawing inspiration from both her Lebanese and European roots. OK, pressure's on. Finding for a semi-final place. Yeah. What are you going to cook for us that's going to make us go, wow? My starter is this scallop with coriander cream papaya sauce. And then I'm doing a rack of lamb with basmati rice and coriander sauce again. Pudding, it's a plum tart with sugar syrup. It has the hint of the Lebanon. It's just a mix of Western food with a lot of hints of Mid Middle Eastern taste as well into it. You see the other two, right? Right. Are you better than them? I hope my food will taste different and you'll like it more. She's got scallops with pawpaw. Well, I've never tasted that combination before. Lamb, all those lovely spices in the Middle East, cumin and coriander. Sounds fantastic. You've got 40 minutes left. So far in the competition, Glenn has combined uncomplicated quality cooking with a confident demeanour. Glenn. Hi. For the first time, you have sweat upon your brow. Yeah, it's a tough task to get three courses done of decent quality. And the three courses are? Scallops with uh, a quail's egg on top. Then monkfish wrapped in parma ham, and then for dessert, it's chocolate mousse. To get you into this round, you prepared dishes that you've never cooked before. Have you cooked these before? No. No. I'll just go for the here and now. Glenn's a risk taker. He must be, because today he is cooking three dishes which he's never cooked before, trying to get into the semi final. 20 minutes, guys, 20 minutes. Determined mum of four Denise is pulling out all the stops with an ambitious three-course menu. Tell me what your three courses are, please. Griddled prawns with salsa, and my main will be pork with cider lentils and mustard mash. And for my dessert, that'll be lime and coconut cheesecake with a rum cream. Is, is a number of crowd pleasers going on here, do you think? I sincerely hope so. I mean, I wanted to kind of give you guys a snapshot um, of some of the things that I can actually do. Besides being a mother of four, mm -hmm. you have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. How are you going to cope? How are you going to fit this in if you go through the next round? I'll fit in whatever you want to fit in. I've had to study while having children and working full-time. There's an awful lot of things that I've had to manage to do um, in my life. And so long as I've actually got the dedication and the commitment, nothing is um, unachievable as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Denise has to deliver flavour today. Prawns and salsa, the salsa's got to have a punch. And we've then got a rum and lime cheesecake. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got a load of boxes lined up here and she's ticking every one. I think I'm going to go out of here a stone heavy. You've got three minutes left. One minute.
You're out of time. Time's up. For her starter, Elisa has cooked scallops with a coriander cream sauce, bacon and papaya. There is a question in my mind about the idea of papaya and coriander and scallops. But that's good, because mm -hmm. I like to try things I've never eaten before. OK. The sweetness of the papaya, I don't get. But your scallops are seasoned beautifully, they're cooked beautifully. The cream and the coriander and the bacon with the scallop go beautifully. The first flavour is the sweetness of the pawpaw. And then comes very well cooked scallop and salty bacon. I would eat it all. Can Elisa now raise her game with a rack of lamb with basmati rice, aubergine and nuts? I think it's delicious. The lamb is sweet, the spicing on the outside, the textures are wonderful, the flavours are wonderful. I just absolutely love it. Thank you. Oh, I love the sweetness of the lamb. I like the fruit tang that the raisins give. I mean, that's just been cooked to perfection. Will Elisa continue to win the judge's approval with her plum and frangipan tart? This, Elisa, is definitely not your best dish. The pastry is too crumbly. The plums are not cooked enough. They need to be a lot softer. Saying that, I don't really like very, very sweet desserts, but I do know a man who does. Those plums aren't cooked enough, mm -hmm. they're not wet enough, and what they should be doing is releasing loads and loads of natural juice that helps to cleanse your palate, ready for the next big sticky mouthful. I like the flavours, but even I, with my very, very sweet tooth, is going to struggle with sticky mouthful after sticky mouthful. Have you done enough today to secure your place as a semi-finalist? I hope you can see the potential. You still want to go through? Definitely. The Two. more I do this, the more I want it. Glenn is aiming to impress with a starter of scallops, poached quail's eggs and sweet corn puree. Sweetness of the sweet corn against the scallop I love. Gooey egg running through it, I think is detracting from the flavour of the scallop. OK. The sweet corn goes really well with the quail's egg, which is very strong yolk. And then suddenly you get this sweet taste of the sea that comes in from the scallop. I've got to say, I quite like it. For his main, Glenn has cooked monkfish wrapped in parma ham with creamy cabbage. You get the blend of the seafood of that monkfish with the, the ham, which is good. Your cream sauce has the depth of flavour. Very good. The monkfish is nicely cooked. Right. It's a nice way of cooking it. It's a gentle way of cooking it. Yeah. You can cook, mate. There is no doubt about that. You can cook. Will he continue to win praise with his chocolate mousse and toffee sesame snaps? Lovely, lovely consistency. Right amount of sweetness and cocoa so it doesn't claw the back of your mouth. But you have burnt your caramel, which gives it a finish like coal. <laughs> Shame about the caramel. Your mousse is beautiful, lovely and soft, really rich. Your caramel sesame wafers... Oh, you sort of give with one hand and you take away with the other, don't you? Oh. I've got to admit, um, I've never cooked any of these before. In fact, I've never even eaten monkfish before. But I think I've shown that I can cook, but now if I do go for it, I've got to show the flair which is in me. See, the thing is, I think you are a naturally gifted cook for the fact of coming here and never cooking these dishes before, but you gamble and you may win. Well done. Thanks very much. Cheers.
Denise is gunning for a semi-final place with a starter of griddled king prawns with a lime and avocado salsa. The flavours in that dish are very good, but it just doesn't have the moistness that it needs to make it a wonderful dish. I'll accept that. It's good. The flavours are good. Thank you. But it's too dry. It's too dry. Mm -hmm. Can she make up for lost ground with her mane of pork, cider lentils, mustard mash and apple sauce? That has flavour. The pork is delicious, well seasoned, lentils are earthy and rich but still sweet with the cider, beautifully made mashed potato. I do like it. Hmm. Sweet apple mm. going into wonderful soft pork. What you have cooked is stunningly good. Will Denise's lime and coconut cheesecake with rum cream tip the balance in her favour? I like the flavours, mm -hmm. that lovely coconut. The cream cheese in there is very, very sweet. We asked for one thing, and that was flavour. And I think you've delivered it today. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. Cleansing lime, going into deeper coconut, going into hint of rum. That is the taste of the Caribbean in a cheesecake. Those flavour combinations are simply, simply superb. <laughs> You've done yourself proud today, haven't you? I'm sure that you're eager, both of you guys have done things by where you've thought, that's perfect. I want to look at things and, and think, that's perfect as well. Food like this, at your level, extraordinary. But we've only got one semi-final place. Thank you. Joyous food, I mean really joyous and fantastic cooks, I mean bursting, bursting with talent. This is a really serious and tough judging decision. We now need to find a semi-finalist. We know how beautiful a cook Eliza can be. That scallop dish for me was well made, it's well cooked, but the idea of taking a papaya and putting it with cream and coriander is just not right at all, it just doesn't make sense. You loved her lamb dish. I love that sort of real peasant earthy flavour. The rice, the aubergines was magical. The dessert to me was completely wrong. It was far too sweet with the thick syrup. The plums weren't cooked enough on the frangipan tart. Uh uh. Oh my God, I think the quarterfinals and I haven't slept a wink. Semis, I don't know what, what will happen to me. I'll be overwhelmed, I'll be ecstatic. It's, I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. I'd like now to talk about Glenn. To come on here and do recipes you've never done before, I mean, that is brave. The question we have to ask ourselves, have we discovered in Glenn a natural cook? Perfectly cooked scallop, slice of truffle, wonderfully cooked little quail's eggs on top. The idea of twice cooking a piece of monkfish, he first poached it and then pan frying it so it had crispy ham on the outside, that's clever. His chocolate mousse was absolutely perfect, but his caramel was burnt and tasted like charcoal. I don't know, I knew the caramel was burnt, so I went with the gamble and I tried to pull it back, failed. I think Denise today made three absolute crowd pleasers. I've got to say, the prawn dish, really, really wonderful flavour from the avocado, the tomato, the lime, brilliant stuff. But it wasn't wet enough. But it's pretty close. I love that pork dish. You know, cooking a piece of pork like that from scratch, seasoning it well, and people say, oh, that's easy. It ain't, it ain't. The flavours in that cheesecake, that was the Caribbean in a pudding. It was just <laughs> lovely. It would really break my heart not to get through. I'm putting a lot into this. I'm focusing a lot on this. I'm hungry for this. I'm not just, I'm ravenous. That was a great quarterfinal, and that's what makes our job an absolute joy but on the other hand really really difficult decision really difficult decision but i would just ask you to just clear your mind for a moment and ask yourself one question who do you see as a master chef winner because if you put them through the semi-final that's what you're saying which one of these guys 
Would you be happy crowding MasterChef winner? I've got a huge grin on my face because I reckon you three rock. You're great. But we only have one place. Our winner is Denise. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't do my utmost best today. They know best, they made the right decision. It was a fantastic, you know, experience for me. So I'm, I'm happy and sad at the same time. A little disappointed, but I done my best though. I done my best. And the best, you know, the best person won at the end of the day. Well done, Denise. Well done. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. Denise has produced some great, great food. She's a very good cook. And one of the best we've seen for a very long time. She is more than worthy of a semi-final place. I can't believe that I'm about to go through to a, a semi-final on MasterChef. Yeah. Oh. Congratulations. I can't believe it. I am so delighted. Absolutely delighted. Denise will return for the semi-finals. But next time, we're back with six new contestants, all battling it out for the title of MasterChef.